What's up, Eggheads? I'm Ben Tibbles with New Egg. We're back in the studio with JJ from Asus. All right, JJ, we're about to start. Tell me about your little, I think the chefs call it a mise en place. You're, get, you're getting everything you need ready and in place beforehand, but take me through it. We're gonna start with a couple of key components. So we've got our CPU right here, we've got our motherboard right here, and we've gone ahead and already unboxed the chassis. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at that guy? I'm very excited about this. First of all, look at that. Now, I don't know necessarily that this is gonna be the box that's the retail package for your CPU, so if you are picking up a Raptor, like I don't know that you're necessarily gonna be getting this, but you are, of course, gonna be be getting one of those guys, a 13900K if you decide to pick one of these up. Whoa! Oh wait, <laughs> there we are. All right, we got a little bit of an unboxing there. The best way is actually lift up and out. I was just illustrating forward. that so that you would all know. Yeah, also you got all your documentation in there. Keep that on side. I know pretty much everything on the board so I don't need it, but for those of you might be putting off. it together, it might be useful. The other thing underneath here, you're gonna see that you got all kinds of accessories that come with this box. The reality is for a basic build, you don't need any of these items that come in there. With the exception of that one, that's actually gonna include the Wi-Fi antenna. Why don't we go ahead and take that CPU out and we're gonna get ready to install this guy. Ooh. Pretty sweet. So this is gonna be our 13900K. Quick tip I always recommend, make sure to wash your hands beforehand. Reduce the type of oil, debris, dust, dander, sweat that you might have on your hands. All we're gonna need to do is we can see right here, we've got actually the socket. We're just gonna go ahead and press down on this bar. We're gonna move it out and we're gonna let it come up. And then from there, that will expose the socket, right? And we can see we can lift up and there we have our yes. actual socket. So uh, when we go ahead and take that out there. I'm gonna go ahead and let you do that. Oh, okay. You don't wanna take it on yourself. Oh my goodness. This is, this is worth more than, well, probably most of what I own. When you go ahead and take a look at the CPU, you're gonna see that you do have notches. So you got one notch, got a second notch right there. So you have your four notches. And your four notches are gonna line up with the notches that are gonna be within the CPU socket. So you just wanna go ahead and get those lined up. Now, lift and drop down. We're gonna go ahead and drop that in there. We're gonna go ahead and push that retention plate back down and push. You will feel a little bit of pressure, that's entirely okay. Push back in and it's locked in. CPU has been installed, so now we're good to go. So the next part from here, now that we've got our CPU installed, would be to actually apply thermal compound. Mm -hmm. We don't need to worry about that because the AIO cooler that we're using, the Ryogen, already comes with thermal compound pre-applied to the base plate. Awesome, Ricky loves that, I know. So the next thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is actually install our M.2 SSDs. So JJ, we got our M.2 here. You were telling me that there are many M.2 slots on this motherboard. Is there a difference between them or are they functionally the same? So here we've got this Patriot VP4300. This is PCI Gen 4 M.2 base SSD, very fast. Normally what you would be looking at is making sure that your actual slots align with the Gen specification that that drive will be. This one is also linked to what's called the CPU. This technically will provide the lowest latency, which will give you the quote unquote best performance, as opposed to maybe an M.2 slot, which is gonna be linked to the chipset. Right now, we're just gonna be installing one primary drive, so we're gonna to wanna to go with that primary mm -hmm. top slot, and we're gonna be good to go. There are two types of people who know that you always hold on to the manual, and it's PC builders and board gamers. <laughs> when we go ahead and remove the heatsink, we'll see that we actually have right there our thermal pad, and then we also have the thermal tape. And so this tape is essentially protecting the pad, so you would wanna go ahead and peel off that tape, because we do wanna make sure that we're making contact with the M.2 SSD. Do you wanna pull off the thermal tape? Oh, I mean, I always like a good peel. Oh, see it? Yeah, it's coming up a little bit there at the end. There we go, perfect. Yep, so we're gonna go ahead and pull off that one. There All right, we go. so we got one down, and now if we wanna go ahead and maybe pull that one. Oh, there's a tape there too. Yeah, oh, I see. Yeah. so we got the front and the back, correct. So pretty streamlined. Uh, you're gonna take your M.2 base SSD, you're gonna angle it into the slot, right? It will only key in one way, so make sure to just key it in the right way, so you'll actually notice right there, there's a little notch. Make sure the key in. Yeah, if you're forcing, it's wrong. Correct, yep. And you're just gonna angle that down until you hear a little bit of that click, if you heard, heard a little that. bit of that. And then we're gonna move this little latch and we're gonna lock it into place. So we see right there, now it's been locked in, so literally if I was to turn the board over, no M.2 drive fell out, and that's because like it's Like a been... Dairy Queen blizzard. <laughs> we're just gonna go ahead and install back our heatsink and we'll now have installed our M.2 base SSD. So now we can just throw it in the uh, the case, right? Toss it in there, it sticks where it's supposed to, and then... You could go that route. Shove would... some cables in and they all find their way, right? That's definitely not in the manual. <laughs> um, the next step would it be putting in the power supply. Through the benefit of editing, we've got all our cables connected Magic. right here. As I noted, right, we've got our motherboard cable, right? And then we have our two EPS connectors. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect those and we're gonna keep moving this along. 
Okay, so we've got the PSU in, it's in the right wave, the bracket is on, we've got all the cables pulled through here so we can start the cable management process, yes? Yep, correct. Now you don't have to super stress about it, you've got actually a mount of kind of clearance area over here on this side so that if you want a little bit more flexibility in terms of kind of packing it in there, we've got room to make it work. But the main reason why we've gone ahead and done this is that specifically those two EPS or those CPU power connectors right here, so I want to route these beforehand so that I essentially can then easily route those to the top of the motherboard once we install that in our next step. So let's go ahead and pass these through and we'll keep moving it along. All right. So now that we've got those cables running in there, I just want to be able to lay this flat down now because I find that generally easiest to be able to install the motherboard. Sure. So I'm just going to go ahead and pack these in and get ready Sweep to Sweep them the under the rug. <laughs> uh, I just snapped. I just snapped and it happened. Or we didn't do that. Yeah, so now we've gone ahead and we've uh, completed the installation. I always like to give a little bit of what I call the quote unquote wiggle test. So usually I'll, I'll take the top of the arm heat sink a little bit and kind of I'll just move it around a little bit, make sure that there's no play. As long as you feel it's kind of snug in place, you're good to go. So we need to go ahead and connect those EPS connectors. All right, so you can see right here in the top left hand corner right there, you can see the dual EPS power connectors have been connected and we've gone ahead and pulled them through to be very snug. So you want to pull them all the way at the back and that's just to make sure that those cables aren't obstructing this space because we're going to be using this in a little while once we mount the radiator and the fans there at the top. All right, next up, we're going to go ahead and get our AIO cooler installed. So we've got the Ryogen 2 360. This is pretty much our flagship AIO cooler. And what you would kind of do is rest it up at the top. And it fits just kind of up like that. And yeah, there's plenty of room up here. Yep. And so that's going to be the way we're going to situate. Of course, we still need to get the fans there on the cooler. But that just kind of gives us a rough sense of how it's going to ultimately play out sure. in terms of the overall design. So now the next step is at the back of the motherboard we'll see that this chassis has an open cutout and you can see actually the back of the motherboard. And with the back of the motherboard, there's actually space for us to install this bracket. I just wanna take that guy and get it lined up in there. Now it's resting in place. I'm gonna go ahead and now finish getting this mounted in. We're then also gonna attach the fans to the actual radiator. Sure. And then we're gonna get that radiator mounted in there. All right. So as you can see right here, we've got the bracket in place. Uh, we've gone ahead and attached there our standoffs. So the next thing is actually get ready to actually mount the AIO cooler itself. But before we do that, we do actually want to install our fans. Right, so Ben's unpacking some of the fans right here. Of course, it's a 360 millimeter AIO, so that means you get three fans, right? Uh, and that's gonna cover the entirety of the radiator. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, right? And when you talk about fan installation, it's probably more sensible to make sure to run the cables in the back. So then we can run everything to the back so that we can figure out how to best kind of cable manage all that in places. All right, as we can see right here, thanks to gracious Ben and his time and effort, we have gone ahead and successfully installed all of our fans. So fans have gone ahead and been affixed, but now we're gonna go ahead and essentially flip this guy over. We're gonna virtually essentially mount it. We're gonna hold it in place so that I can actually affix the screws at the top of the actual mm -hmm. radiator tray. See right here, through it all, I have not removed this cover plate. And the reason why is of course, we do not want to essentially affect the thermal compound that's already been pre-applied. But otherwise, as long as you keep this in place, we don't have to worry about applying any thermal compound, the sped pattern or anything along those lines, it'll be taken care of us. So just make sure to keep that in place until we're actually ready to remove it and then mount it to the actual CPU itself. So here you can see we're holding the actual radiator in place. You'll see that you've got the motherboard tray and you'll see that you actually have these spacers. This allows you to go ahead and move the radiator back and forth to attempt to adjust in relation to the inner cavity of the chassis. So you don't wanna go all the way down. You just wanna thread it enough so that it won't fall. So let me go ahead and turn this around. All right, as you can see right here, I've got a little bit of range of motion where I can move the radiator. And that allows you to have that flexibility that just mm -hmm. depending internally on what you're doing, you just have a little bit of play, a little bit of flexibility to make sure to position that where it's gonna look best and where it's gonna be in least conflict to anything else. Now the next step is from here, essentially where we have that of course cover plate, mm -hmm. we would move that cover plate and you can see right there, we've got the standoffs, we're gonna lay that in place. We've got thumb screws and then we would torque it down. Let's go ahead and actually get everything connected up. Okay, so I'm about to install this, but these are kind of cramping my style. Is this, is, can I yep. remove that? Exactly, that's a magnetic cover. So that's the 3.5 inch display. You can go ahead and uh, remove the cover plate and get that affixed there to the standoffs. If you have like a little paper towel, just a little bit. I leak sometimes too. What I've learned is it's just nothing to be ashamed of. Anyways, the constructs of decency are just that, just constructs. 
All right, at this point you can see motherboards have been installed, CPU has been installed, cooler has been installed, M.2 SSD has been installed, power supply has been installed. So right here we've got some awesome Patriot Venom memory. This is DDR5. JJ, I noticed that we have two two-blade kits and not a single four-blade kit. Particular reason for that or is it just on sale? Yes, a lot of users like the aesthetic in terms of a four DIMM kit configuration. Now the thing you have to keep in mind is that right now there's actually no essentially four DIMM kits on the market. All the memory that you have available to you is going to be generally two DIMMs itself. So when users actually go about getting two kits of memory, they're actually making technically a configuration that is not validated. It's not necessarily guaranteed to work. So what we do as a manufacturer is we actually have to do a little bit of work that's defined within the UEFI BIOS as kind of specialized auto rules. These auto rules are things that you don't realize are occurring, but essentially when you put this memory in and you attempt to enable a profile, we have to kind of make subtle adjustments to attempt to make that configuration work, even though it's not actually a validated profile. Because even though you bought two kits of memory that are exactly the same, mm -hmm. it's different than actually if the memory manufacturer was to take four sticks of memory and validate them all for that specification. But Raptor Lake actually is quite impressive, even outperforming Alder Lake, where we can actually realize a 6,000 MT configuration, even in a four dim setup. Huh. Now keep in mind, this is overclocking, it's never guaranteed. One last thing to also note that is if you do go with two dims on a four dim enabled motherboard, there's actually a little silk screen that's on the motherboard and two primary banks that you wanna utilize. These are the prioritized banks. So this is gonna be channel A2 and B2. If you do not use those banks, you can actually get lower performance and actually increase level of instability with two DIMMs. Hmm. So it's important that you make sure to use those two banks first if you're using only two DIMMs. If you're using four DIMMs, it doesn't matter because all of them are gonna be popular. Sure. Let's go ahead and install our memory. Absolutely. We're putting all four mm -hmm. that you wanna match the two DIMMs. I was gonna ask actually, to the, yeah. To the two banks. There we are. Okay. All right, so next up, probably maybe the most expensive component that you might have within your system, and it's gonna be the graphics card. So right here, we've got the ROG Strix 4090 OC. This time, I think I'm gonna let you do you it. You want me to do it? Uh, please, this is uh, this is more than several of my paychecks. All right, we've gone ahead and seated that in, and the main thing you're looking for when you get the graphics card installed is you wanna make sure that the actual bracket is flush with the chassis. All right, so we can see we've got our graphics card installed, so it's now in there. We're all secured. You can definitely start to see now overall kind of the look and feel of the system is kind of coming all together. So at this point, as I noted at the top, remember I've got those screws that I can go ahead and adjust. I'm gonna finish uh, hearing those screws, getting this essentially affixed in place. And just as a recap, we've got one cable for sure that's the Ryogen, which is gonna go to a USB header on the motherboard, USB 2 header. We then have that micro USB connector, which is gonna go to the controller. We're gonna get the fans connected to this controller as well. And then remember, we also have the controller and we got the ARGB cables as well as the PWM fan cables, which are gonna to connect to this controller. And we also need to make sure that we also have that SATA power, which is connected to the power supply for this guy as well. All right, so we've just about got the system finished up here. We still have a little bit in terms of cable management to complete in terms of the back end, but with the time crunch in terms of trying to get everything, we've actually got it pretty much set up to post. So post, for those of you not familiar with that term, is power on self-test. Let's get ready to go ahead and kick on the power switch here. Let's see if Ben did it okay. All right. Uh, we're gonna go ahead. We can see now we're getting a little bit of lighting there on the card We're getting a little bit of lighting on the motherboard and also there on the Ryogen 2 So let's go ahead and hit that power button and see what happens All right, there Rad. we go. The system is kicking on. It's pretty sweet. It's all coming together So we're gonna go ahead and throw a keyboard mouse on there confirm that the actual post has gone ahead and completed successfully And if it does it means we've gone ahead and built an awesome brand new Z790 13 gen RTX 4090 gaming <laughs> system. So now we just quickly want to run through a couple of things within the UEFI environment, make sure everything is detected correctly and essentially working correctly. So the first one is making sure your CPU is registered. So here we've got a Core i9-13900K, check. Next one is going to be right here, the BIOS version. Next, we can go ahead and verify our actual memories. Uh, now you'll see that it's running at 4800 MT. That is normal because it's running at its baseline default frequency. If you want to go ahead and enable the XMP profile, just go ahead and drop down to the XMP profile, enable it, and you'll be good to go. The next step is to go ahead and verify that your cooler is working correctly. And we can see right here, CPU temperature, we don't see any indicators of a red line on the graph, which would mean that essentially it was reaching essentially like a thermal throttle break point. And here we can see it's consistently pretty much staying at about 41C. If you see it pretty much stay constant, you know you're good to go. And in addition to that, lastly here, we've got the M.2 SSD is also fully verified. Okay, we got the system all up and running. How well is it running? 
It's running pretty sweet. I mean, at this point, of course, we would still want to go through like a full stress test, get all your applications loaded in, and then ideally after running maybe gaming for like an hour of stress test, you would then want to enable our Asus AIOC technology. And we talked about it a little bit in the overview video, which if you guys haven't checked out, make sure to go ahead and check that out. But we went ahead and enabled it without doing that because uh, it's still able to reference actually our CPU cooling performance and knows that we actually have a, of course, a Core i9-3900K, and it's gone ahead and given us a pretty cool automatic-based overclock. And again, you have the flexibility, you can go in and tune this further whether you want to go a little bit more aggressively a little bit more conservatively you want to dial in temperature targets a lot of cool stuff but we got 5.8 gigahertz on three cores we then have 5.6 gigahertz on five cores and then we have 5.5 gigahertz across all cores and we've also overclocked our e cores and then on top of that we also have overclocked memory and then if we just want to even take a little bit further we could go into gpu tweak 3 enable our ac oc profile on our rtx 4090 just to bump up performance a little bit more but overall it's a bc system it's an awesome high performance system and if you guys are looking to build one hopefully you guys now have a little bit of a blueprint on building your next generation system based on a z790 series based motherboard 1300k and a 40 series based graphics card we saw it here first folks here at newegg studios jj from asus came and built us one beast of a baddie of a build using the latest and greatest from intel and asus and of course nvidia with those you know don't forget the 4090s they're nice to have in there talking about overclocking one already my god hey man thank you so much for your time thank you so much for your expertise and and uh telling us everything we need to know about this next gen yeah and uh, if you guys have any questions feel free to go ahead and drop them in the comments i'll make sure to go ahead and follow up when i can and uh see if you guys have any other questions feel free to hit us up in our asus pc diy group so thanks for checking out this video don't forget to hit that like button right subscribe he said it better take, take care, care folks <laughs>